So the last couple of years, if you read the Wall Street Journal, you watch the news, you're going to hear about inflation, interest rates. Everybody's scared about these two numbers. Inflation is so high. Jerome Powell has to keep increasing interest rates. What is the next big thing they're going to talk about in 2023? You ready? It's unemployment. Here's what we're going to do in this video today. There's multiple formulas they have to come up with on employment. I'll share those formulas with you. There are six key factors that is causing this uh, economy to be an anomaly that even economists cannot predict what's really going to happen to the economy. You'll see what those six things are. And Another thing we'll talk about is called Phillips Curve. It's something you need to know about that has to do with unemployment. All right, so let's get right into it. A couple things. You'll hear people say today's unemployment rate is 3.5%, but that's the U3. But our U6 unemployment rate is 7.4%. And people will say, what the hell is U3 and U6? We'll talk about that today. But let's just look at the U3, right? The unemployment rate. Historically, US government started tracking unemployment rate in the 50s. But based on data, they can kind of track what happened in the 20s and the 30s. The data they get is the worst unemployment rate we've ever had in the history of America was in the 30s. And the lowest we ever had was 1.2% during World War II in 1944, but it's 1.2% because everybody was kind of forced to go to war. So you didn't have a choice. You got a job. Go to war. And if we want to talk about post-World War, what happened to the lowest unemployment rate, it's 2.9% in 1953. And we're at 35 today. It's not a big difference, which means kind of it's not going to get any better than it is today. Maybe a small little point, 1.2%, but not dramatically, which means the only direction it can go right now is what? Go up. Now, here's the thing to keep in mind. Since then, we've had 11 different recessions and the U.S. government has tried to control markers to not allow unemployment to go too high. And we'll talk about that. But a couple things we need to know. Six key factors throws everything that we've used out the window on why today's economy is an anomaly. Number one, we've never had 128 month economic expansion and that was caused because money was so cheap. Zero to 1% interest rates. We've never done that in the history of the economy before. I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors, Aura. Uh, It's a very important thing for you to do if you don't already have a product like this. While home robbery and losses in America is declining year over year, digital losses every year is skyrocketing. 2021 was $7 billion alone. $780,000 is lost every hour. Aura protects what you value the most in one easy-to-use app such as identity theft protection, parental control, secure VPN, antivirus, password manager, spam list removal. It does a ton and more. So protect you and yourself from America's fastest growing crime. Try Aura free for two weeks and see if any of your or your family's personal information has been compromised. Click on a link below to get started with your 14 day free trial with Aura. Number two, COVID. When's the last time we experienced a pandemic the way we did? It threw everything off. Number three, trillions of dollars pumped into the economy. Nearly 50% of everything we have in the economy currency wise was fed into it in two and a half years. We've never experienced that before. Number four, in 2022, the Fed increased the interest rates seven times. That's seven times in one year. You know when's the last time we increased it seven times? When do you think? 2008. By the way, the record is eight times in 05. And a fun fact here, do you know what year we lowered the rates the most times? 2001. You know how many times we lowered the rates in 2001? You ready? Not five times, not eight times, not 10 times. 11 times we lowered the rates in 2001. Again, it's a very unpredictable climate today. Number five, great resignation, increased wages. People were normally getting a job for 40 grand a year, you had to pay them 65. They were getting a job for $100,000, you had to pay them $150,000. It was a strange time when it came down to making job offers the last year and a half, two years. Point number six is population actually moved, like physically they moved. A lot of people moved out of California. First time since 1851, California's population went down. 330,000 people left New York to other places. Chicago. Illinois, moving to Texas or Florida. So whether it was politics or it was working remote, why am I living in New York and paying so much cost? I can work remote out of Nashville Nashville, and get paid the salary in New York. I'm just going to move. So again, we've not experienced that before. So again, these six key factors happening at the same time during a two and a half, three year period is what's causing an anomaly where nobody can predict the future. But there's four different types of unemployment. Let's talk about it. Number one, frictional unemployment. This has nothing to do with the economy. This is people are moving from one job to another job, transitioning out from one state to another state. So there's a 30, 60, 90 day window of them not having a job. That's called frictional unemployment. The second type of unemployment is 
structural unemployment. So for example, let's just say we're hiring a bunch of IT here, you know, engineers here, cost is going up. You're like, listen, I'm not gonna do this. Moving forward, we're gonna hire a thousand employees out of India, you know, 500 engineers from Armenia. I'm gonna go offshore. I'm not gonna do it here. That's structural, where those jobs are lost here, right? Or, you know, newspaper industry is a big industry. Boom, online comes in. Why do we need newspapers? We don't, boom. 25% unemployment in a year. They're going into different industries. There's a little bit of a structural unemployment. Chat GBT, restaurants now don't have fast food, they have automation. This is the kind of stuff that causes unemployment to go up, but it's purely structural. Number three is, the title will explain it itself, it's called seasonal unemployment, which means Christmas is here, Black Friday is here, let's hire a bunch of different people to work retail, but then January 15th, we don't need you anymore. Summertime, New York, hotels, super busy, we need to hire a bunch of people to work at the hotel, boom, season's gone, everyone's going back to school, uh, it's not here anymore. Farmers, oh, this is our season, hire them, boom, two months from now, we don't need them anymore. Seasonal unemployment just happens every year. And last but not least, it's the cyclical unemployment. This is a part of capitalism, boom and bust, recession, kind of like what we're going through right now when people are making money. They spend money, they go entertain, they do all this stuff. When the market goes through its bust, they're not spending money. The economy kind of contracts a little bit. That's the cyclical unemployment. So those were the four different things that cause unemployment, but here's a kicker. Every month, the Bureau of Labor Statistics puts out stats. And in the government level, and a lot of corporations, companies, there's the one statistics everybody looks forward to seeing. Some are concerned, some are enthusiastic about it. It's the unemployment rate. When it comes out, like, oh my God, rates are good. We're good. Why? Many reasons. If people are having a job, they're paying the bills, crime is lower. Re-election for politicians. If it's high, you're not getting re-elected, crime is up. A lot of uncertainty. People are not spending money. They're not investing into different communities. It's a very, very important indicator. But the question becomes, well, Pat, how did they figure out the formula for unemployment? Let me share with you their formula on how they come up with the unemployment rate. Here's what it is. Okay, so the U.S. Employment Report is based on two surveys that they do. The first one is the Establishment Report, which asks a random sample of employers how many people are on the payroll. The second one is the Current Population Survey, also called the CPS, in which approximately 60,000 households, whether their family members are working or looking for work. Okay, so don't ask me why it's 60,000 and why they do it the way they do it, but that's how they get the numbers. Now, here's a formula. They take the number of unemployed divided by the total labor force times a hundred. Okay, I'm sure you're having so much fun right now getting all these statistics, but as if it's not already complicated, there's six different ways they measure unemployment. You ready? Let's have some fun together. It's U1, U2, all the way down to U6. Here's what it is. U1, these are people that are unemployed 15 weeks or longer. U2, they have completed temporary work or recently lost their jobs. U3, which is the one we typically hear about, is the official unemployment rate, total unemployed as a percentage of the civilian labor force. U4, ready? The total unemployed plus the total of discouraged workers, those who have given up looking for work because they don't think there are jobs available. U5, the total of unemployed, U3s, plus discouraged workers, U4s, plus all those marginally attached to the labor force, those unemployed who would like to work but have not looked for work recently. And last but not least, U6. The total unemployed, U3s, plus discouraged workers, U4, plus marginally attached workers, U5, plus part-time or underemployed workers who want to work full-time but can't because of economic reasons. So now that you know what the U1, U2, U3, U6 is, you'll see why U3 is 3.5% unemployment and U6 is 7.4%, right? But, but here's the point, why do these things matter? Historically, there's this thing called Phillips Curve. Phillips Curve means when inflation is high, unemployment is low. They're inverse, like directly complete opposite, okay? When inflation is low, unemployment sometimes can be high. So today, what has Jerome Powell been doing? They increased interest rates seven times, okay? Back to back to back to cause inflation to go down. If they cause inflation to go down, unemployment should go up, okay? So let me give you a little bit of context in history. In the 70s, both interest rates were high, inflation was high, and unemployment was high. That's what you call stagflation, Jimmy Carter era. In the 90s, both inflation was down and both unemployment was down. That's the last time we were in a budget surplus during Clinton era when you hear about that. That's because the economy was great in the 90s. We were managing our finances properly as a nation. Today, it's a little weird. Again, those six key factors we talked about but if 
everything goes the way it is, the next data you're gonna hear about them talking about unemployment going to 5%, 6%, possibly 7, 8% is gonna be happening by Q3, Q4, maybe Q1 of 2024. Again, if history repeats itself, that's the direction we're going. So what does this mean to you? You may say, Pat, well, okay, I got the data. Now what do I think about? Well, if you're an employee yourself and you're sitting here saying, what if I get laid off? The market always loves great employees with great attitudes that go above and beyond, that are experts, that are constantly getting better because it's very, very hard to find people like that. If that's you, you're gonna be all right. Number two, if you're an employer or an entrepreneur or business owner, this is gonna be a very good season to recruit talent, period because as layoffs take place, somebody getting laid off doesn't mean that is bad talent. It could simply mean that the company at the time didn't have the money to keep them. All this means is you can pick up some great people right now, the next three, six, 12 months, in case unemployment does go up. Having said that, I want you to watch this video I shot, I think 2018, 2019, eight ways to prepare for a market crash. This is pre-COVID, very interesting video if you've never seen it. Click here to watch the video, and if you got value from today's video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.